Hi, I'm Julie, and I was part of the multi-level marketing industry for five years. And I was part of two high control groups simultaneously during that five year period. So this is all in my opinion and my experience. And um, the reason why I'm doing this video is because it's important for people to hear other people's stories in order for them to have the courage to speak out too. I'm going to be speaking out about my experience with rank makers and you can use this information and continue to do your, your own research. And yeah, so let's, let's go. So I came across this group in 2017. I had started with Monate and I had hit the highest rank that I ever did achieve in Monate, which was managing market builder, MMB. Now at the time, I don't know if the compensation plan has changed, but MMB was like the top 2% of the company and the rank below that AMB, I think that's what it was. That That's the top. It was the top 1% of the company. It's really messed up, but it, it very few, like very small percentage of people like are at any of these ranks. And it's not that high up the compensation plan. Like you're not up at the director level, but it's important to point that out because that's the highest rank I ever achieved. And that was before I joined rank makers. And you'll see, because I have a video of um, Ray Higdon, who's the leader of the group that is referencing me, but he doesn't say my name, but it's clear that he's talking about me because I've had, he continues to make content about me. And he says that I wasn't very successful at all. So I'm going to just, you know, tell my, uh, share my story, my experiences and call out the bullshit because people are afraid to say his name. They're afraid to even say the, the name rank makers. And that's wrong. You know, when, when you have any kind of criticism or scrutiny and people are too afraid to say your name, that's, that's not a leader. You know, people are afraid of him. That's it's, it's problematic. So the first, uh, so I joined, I joined this group. Um, and I'm not going to like go into all of this. I've talked about this um, on different podcasts, especially with Roberta Blevins, Life After MLM, and also Danielle Bolster with From Huns to Humans. But I want to give you some more context and more information. A lot happens in these in this five year period, as you can imagine. And I want to really show how when you know a Hun, somebody in the multi level marketing industry says they're all in, what that can look like. And this is really uncomfortable for me to share. But part of me, I don't give a fuck. I also give a fuck. It's the Gen X part of me. It's important to blow apart this stigma of shame. These high control groups, the multi-level marketing industry uses shame to keep people silenced. You're going to see, like I did live videos every day for three and a half years. And you're going to see when I play some clips, the, the frantic energy, the manic, um, the belief that if I keep doing this, I'm going to get better at it. Like it all comes through and it's really fucking disturbing. There's also a clip in here or like a moment where I'm talking about something I don't want to talk about, but I do it anyway, because I feel like you're supposed to overshare. You're supposed to be vulnerable because that's when your business really will take off. And it, all it is, is emotional manipulation, which oddly enough, Mac attack talked about, and I had never put it together like that. I knew it was wrong but I still didn't have the language. I'm like, that's, it's fucking emotional manipula manipulation. That's what I ta was taught to do. That's what I did. And that's why it's so hard to reconcile and speak out about this afterwards because the it's, you, you've hurt a lot of people. I hurt a lot of people and, um, and I didn't want to, I believed I was doing the right thing. So as part of this, uh, this group rank makers, there was this component or like this, um, it was called the 14 day challenge. And this was to go live every day for 14 days. And Ray would go live at the time in 2017, when I first joined Rank Makers, he was going live every single day in the group Rank Makers. And we would be so excited and he would be training on mindset and prospecting tips. And, you know, it's just the usual, it's the same old bullshit. And I heard all this same shit over the next five years, <laughs> same stories, same training. It never changed. It's still going on. I see <laughs> Like a, this fucking story about the posture around electricity. It's like, you've got posture around electricity. Why don't you have posture around your network marketing business? 
this will not make any sense to you unless you're a rank maker and then you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I've heard that. Even if you think I'm a hater, um, I respect you so much. I, The people in that group, the people that are employed, they're good people. They believe they're doing the right thing. It's, it's fucking awkward because it's like, I was it. I was there. I believed all this stuff. And you're going to see these written posts I've done. It's brutal. So it's time to like rip this bandaid off and let's go for it. So, okay. Um, 14 day challenge. You go live every day for 14 days. And this is to, if you really want to, you know, get recruit people to your multi-level marketing business, this is what, you know, step out of your comfort zone. Social media is here. I think he would use this, uh, metaphor or thing about mowing the lawn like you could mow the lawn by hand or you could get like an electric lawnmower why wouldn't you use an electric lawnmower meaning why would you not do a facebook live video it's such a powerful tool you can recruit people to your business right or get customers so i was already going live every day because i had heard the number one income earner in mon at the time had gone live every day on facebook for six months and i thought well i'm going to do it for a year now, for me, doing something like that, being consistent like that is very easy for me. And it's not it's not healthy and it's not good for everyone to do. But I had already like I have a background in doing Ironman distance triathlons and I had done 18 of them. Long before I ever heard of Ray Higdon or rank makers, which is also important because I want to emphasize that because he had said I had no success at all, which you'll see. <laughs> So for me to do 18 Ironman distance races over the course of 13 years, it's, you have to be consistent in your training. I didn't know how to swim. You know, I had to, I think I was like uh, 29 when I had my first swimming lesson. And then I ended up, you know, progressing enough where I won some half iron distance races. It wasn't an Ironman. It was like local races that were, one was called the Chinook half iron. Um, I won some Olymp Olympic distance races, local and on also like around Alberta and that. And then also um, some sprint races in Mexico. <laughs> so consistently showing up every day for a year doing a live video, it, it, it is really daunting. It's you're putting yourself out there. It's not for everybody. I don't think it's for anybody at all. I don't think anybody should do that, especially for your network marketing business. Um, but for me, I'm like, I can do this no problem. So, but so when you go into this 14 day challenge every day after Ray would do the live video in rank makers, he would then go into this 14 day challenge group and do a really like a, a great training. I thought his training was fucking amazing. I looked up to him. I respected him so much. Um, a lot of what he teaches, there can be value in it, but it's fucking twisted and it's, um, if there's so many contradictions in it and a lot of it is uh somebody had left this quote on or a comment on one of my TikToks, and it was like bumper sticker reduction i was like that's that's totally it it me it's meaningless it's meaningless drivel meaningless inspirational fluff and it's all based on a lie <laughs> which is that you can get to the top of your pyramid scheme any multi-level marketing company by working on your mindset changing your vibration now that's the that's the new narrative so in this 14 day challenge group, um, there was a, like they have a number of contests within each 14 day challenge. And the first contest, before the first contest was launched, it was kind of like to get everybody excited. There was a, a pre-contest and you had to make this video. I forget what the requirements were. You had to share three things or something that you learned already from the group. And I made this video and I won. And so that's kind of like what brought me like like what propelled me into fucking momentum within rank makers i had a lot of eyeballs on me i got a lot of attention i got a lot of um i'm still trying to unpack whether i did get any helpful coaching from ray or not i think i did but a lot of it was um like that backhanded compliment and kind of like oh wait, like i don't i don't know i think i'm looking back i'm like what the fuck did i learn you know I did learn like to look directly at the camera and not at you while you're talking like this. I learned that it was good to say you instead of you guys, because it's a, an emotional connection between people. Um, other than that, like when you follow when the instructions, it was when I started to deviate from his instructions is when I started to <laughs> move away and also get 
more success as in terms of views, especially on TikTok. Um, well, because he was shitting on TikTok and was like calling me a ding dong. Anybody that was like involved with TikTok was ding dong. Until all of a sudden he had to realize that TikTok was actually a thing. I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself, which nobody should be on TikTok if they're in multi-level marketing because it goes against their community guidelines. Anyway, I hope you're still with me. I hope you're bearing with me. I'm trying to like, it's, it's challenging to talk about this stuff. Um, nobody has been like coming on here from rank makers and, and doing it like this. As far as I know, I'm the first person to do it. So I'm, I'm just, I just got to do this. So I won this first contest. So here's this, uh, this first picture. This was Ray. So he breaking down Julie, the dominator Anderson's video and how to be more influential and win more contests. So can you fucking imagine like already I was just like, he was, he was like my mentor. That's what I considered him, you know, was, and I thought, fuck, this is amazing. Like I'm getting all this attention and you can think like, we well, are just getting all this attention. That's what network marketers say to each other. Well, like you just want attention. I don't really know what that means because the whole point of being on social media is to get attention. But it was almost like you get more credibility as well in the eyes of your peers. It felt like I'm going to, I want to get to the top of my compensation plan with Monet. I want to help people. I, at the time, I was one of the people that had a good experience with the products. It didn't last. Uh, a few years later, I wasn't getting good results. And that wasn't the run of, that wasn't the main reason why I left. Um, I wish it had been. I had customers that had negative effects using their products. Um, but, you know, I, I told them what I was told with Mon 8, you know, you're using the products wrong. It's such a fucking shit show. I apologize. I want to keep apologizing for anybody that I prospected, I brought into the multi-level marketing industry um, or brought into rank makers. And I feel it's important to speak out. So he did this breakdown. And then, so of course, then you get all these people like start to follow me on my social media. And it's, it gives you this false sense of like success with the network marketing. So people aren't like buying from me or I'm not recruiting them. It's just all people from different network marketing companies that are participating in rank makers, getting this training. We're feeling like a really part of something special. We do something different. It's like, um, we're a different breed of network marketers. So we're a fucking different breed, all right. <laughs> but we're going to show up with more, with integrity, ethically. We're going to do things the right way. This industry is a bad name, but, you know, we're going to do it the right way. So this was a big deal because this kind of like, it, it was, it was like a pivoting thing from this point on. It was like, I had more status and it just kind of grew like within the, the fucking group. Right. And then each subsequent challenge, I would enter these 14 day challenges. I would always place in each contest. So they'd have like about, I think it would be three contests and then they'd have this final challenge or this final contest, which was so brutal because it was just promoting the 14 day challenge or Ray and his coaching. And it wasn't a live video. It had to be recorded. And I never understood. <laughs> I was like, why is the, the, this whole point is about training us to do live videos. Why is the last contest in every one of these fucking things? I think I did eight of them doing this recorded live video. We're not trained on that. So then, but it's because it's not about any of this shit. It's not about making you more successful in your live videos. It's about having people bring in, you bring in more people to pay him for his coaching and rank makers and inner circle coaching and, and all of the, all of the shit, all of the courses. That's what it's about. That's what this whole thing is about. And in um, commercial cults and cults in general, that's what it's about. It's not about your personal improvement or development, which personal development is a loaded word. Now for me, it's like, holy fuck that and transformation. It's like run red. It's about growing the organization growing the group and having uh growing the leader's power and money and bank account that's what it's about while everybody else the group members think that you're improving but it's just there's one person who's getting richer and richer having more and more attention so here is uh ray congratulating me congratulations to our first pre-contest winners of the 14 day challenge the reason why i want to um really draw attention to this is because I've been mocked 
I've been uh, spoken about with derision and I have been lied about. So it's like, who is this person? Who is this person that was in rank makers? Well, here the fuck I am. So here it is $500 to first place, 50 to second, sixth place. Tonight is the last night. So you can see there I got, so this is a big deal. If you're posted on somebody like network marketing coach that you consider a guru post on their, you know, profile on Facebook. And okay. So the next, so I won like a, I didn't necessarily win subsequent contests, but I'd always place. And so what I mean by place, I would get like third place or fifth place or an honorable mention here, but that would always mean then Ray would like coach your video or analyze and comment on your video and say, you did a good job here or look at the camera or, you know, do whatever. He just give this fucking advice, which was at the time we're all like oh my god that's so fucking amazing and it's and it really wasn't it was just anybody could have given you this advice if you just scroll now on TikTok, you can learn how to do this stuff for free you know and you're not going to get um drained dry financially and spiritually and emotionally <laughs> and then manipulate others to do that so um yeah. So anyway, so you place in these groups. So I would, I got a lot of exposure. So he's like, he's always talking about me. So a lot of people within the group rank makers and then 14 day challenge are like, oh, I know who you are. So it's this, it's this whole community now of people that are like, you've got more eyes on you. And I, it, there, it's a status thing. And it's not just like I'm parading around thinking that I'm like somebody fucking important but you feel really good. You feel like you're a leader. I felt like I was, I want to help other people too. Like, so in each of these challenge groups, every time we'd be like every quarter, there'd be this 14 day challenge. I would go in these groups. And I'd be like 10 tips. If it's your first 14 day challenge. And I would write all these tips down for people. And, and I, I, I got into this cause I really love to help people. Right. And even when I'm in it, I'm like, Oh, I'm going to help people not realizing you know what's going on. Which if you've been in one of these groups, you know, network marketing industry, multi-level marketing industry, you know what I'm talking about. And if you've just watched anti-MLM content, you know it's it's a mind fuck of epic pro proportions. So I'm getting, I'm I'm getting in. I'm already deep in, but I'm getting deeper and deeper in. So here was in Rank Makers, this was in 2018. This is um, one of the admins. And like I said, all these people are really, really good fucking people. And I have so much respect for them. And I, I hope to see them get out. And I know a lot of them have blocked me. And a lot of them call me hater. And uh, that I'm like filled with hate. And, and that's okay. I understand that. And I'm going to be... Um, some people I'm like, they're just fucking weird. Like I don't want to have anything to do with them. It doesn't matter when. But there's a lot of people I'm like, when you're ready and when you're out, I'm here. You know, you send me a message and I'm here. There's a lot of us here. And uh, there's no, we know what it's like to try to reconcile what, what we've done and what we've been a part of. So this was like, oh, I'm so excited to be bringing you guys a live interview with the amazing Julie Anderson tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time. See, they're really hyping, you know, you up in the group, hyping me up in the group. Mark it on your calendar, but they did this with everyone. So it's like they're, it's like they're imbuing me with, um, like with less credibility, like, whoa, this is, I'm getting a lot of attention on me. So, but I'm not making any money. This is just like, you know, it's just this attention you think, and you're getting really busy. And for me, what I wanted to do then, which is, I, I think this is what they, this is a strategy they use is it's like this reciprocity thing. Like I want to give back to them, like, oh, they're, they're giving me all this exposure, whatever the fuck that means. It means they don't want to pay you, right? That's not about this particular thing, but we'll get into that when I was um, not paid for my TikTok training that Ray asked me to do and then bundled up and sold as a bonus. And um, yeah, so I'm speaking. And, and apparently, um, allegedly, this has happened before uh, with a lot of other women that are involved with rank makers. So I'm going to find out how she managed to go live every day for over a year. So that was early days. So I went live every day for three and a half years. And it's so fucking disturbing. And the one thing she turned her focus to that helped her land fourth in personal sales in all of Canada last month for one leg of her team. And there it is. Um, 
here's the next one. Today's the day. Join me and the lovely Julie Anderson live at 2 p.m. Eastern. Today, I will be interviewing her to discover how she has managed to create breakthroughs in her business with a few simple tweaks in mindset and implementation. This is going to be good. These people were my friends. So, and I believed in what I was doing. So, you know, when you're posting this in the group, I think it's important um, for others that are leaving and to see it's like how they fucking turn. When I start being like, wait a second, this is a contradiction. You can't talk to people like that. You're speaking to them with about with contempt, with condescension. You are mocking people. That's not okay. That's not vibrating at a high frequency or you're fucking lying. Like, like. All these stories don't add up about being, Ray would talk about, uh, for example, Ray would constantly say that he was a million dollars in debt and in personal foreclosure. How do you get a million dollars in debt? And was that forgiven during like 2008? Did the banks just be like, how did, or is it implied that because he got into network marketing, suddenly his debt was completely eradicated because that's that is the implication but we never hear the story and and also it was his 11th network marketing company which he became the top income earner of and he got in at fucking (laughs) pre-launch and it's so weird because i never fucking heard that when i was in rank makers it was always like i was in 11 companies but it was he never said he was in pre-launch it was only like um this year i heard that he was in fucking pre-launch like this is the definition of a pyramid scheme so like i'm just like holy shit so okay uh let's see on okay now this is getting really uncomfortable like it hasn't been uncomfortable yet okay i'm gonna get the video up here okay so trigger warning (laughs) if you've been involved in network marketing doing live videos i'm just gonna I'm just going to play this for you. So I'm going to play it on my phone and then have this playing on the screen somehow. And um, I'm not, I'm not going to pause it at the very, I'm going to just, it's just going to scroll through. I did a screen recording and it's going to just roll through my Facebook feed. And you're going to see the part where I talk about being in an abusive relationship. And I'm like clearly distressed. And I'm like, I don't want to do this. This is what undue influence is. This is when people say they, uh, they don't hold a gun to your head. Now they don't have to when you're in a cult because that's not how these things work. Um, And yet I did it. And that's what makes it, it's like an abusive relationship as well. You know, there's, there's these good parts to it, but then there's the fucking bad. And it's like, why don't they just leave? That's the question. Why don't we just leave? And that's why I'm speaking out because more and more of us are leaving and people are getting up, getting the courage to start speaking out. So anyway, uh, I'm going to just scroll. You'll see the screen recording, scroll through and then, um, the last video is, I'm going to just let it play because it's, I think it's three minutes or no, it's two minutes. It's not very long anyway. And it's the video that I won the first 14 day challenge pre-contest with, which I like to say now, like it's the fucking pre-launch. <laughs> okay. So I'll just uh, fucking play this right now. Hi guys. Happy Saturday. My name is Julie Anderson. Thank you so much for being here. So do you want to learn more? Hi, my name's Julie Anderson, and this is why you should do a 14-day challenge. Hey, my name is Julie Anderson. Thank you for being here. So is it worth it to do a live video even if... Hi, everyone. Happy Tuesday. My name is Julie Anderson. This is about putting the important... Hi, guys. Happy Thursday. My name is Julie Anderson. Hi, guys. Happy Wednesday. My name is Julie Anderson. This... Hi, my name is Julie Anderson. Thank you. Hi guys, happy Saturday. My name is Julie Anderson. Hi guys, happy Friday. My name is Julie Anderson and I really don't want to do this video. (laughs) Hi everyone, happy Friday. My name is Julie Anderson and hi, my name is Julie Anderson. Hi, my name is Julie Anderson. Hi, my name is Julie Anderson. Hi everyone, my name is Julie Anderson and I'm going to share with you three tips uh, that I learned from Ray Higdon and the 14 day challenge, how to become the best version of you. The first tip is forgiveness. This is so good. It's giving up on the fact that it could have been any different. And that's a quote from Reverend Michael Beckwith. So I'm just going to say it again. I'm giving up on the fact that it could have been any different. So looking back at the past, and it's like you are who you are. We are who we are, right? And just letting go 
that it could have been any different. So no, if, if this had have been different, if this had have been different, he says it just fogs up our present. And if we can just let that go, forgive and just let that fog clear, so then we can, you know, we can move ahead. The second tip, this is so awesome. Limit negative self talk about others. Hey, Aileen, how are you doing? Thanks for joining. Focus on where, so he says, limit negative self talk about others. So he said, that's not powerful. What's powerful is focusing on where you want to go. He says, the ability to talk about other people negatively is not powerful. It's what everybody else does. And um, he says, if it consumes your time and you're not going to have any time to grow. The third tip for you and for me as well, because it's amazing, is to have winning habits. Helen, oh my gosh, thank you so much for popping on. Oh, I love you, Helen, with your amazing curly hair. Um, I'm trying to look like Helen today. <laughs> Um, have winning habits. Your results are coming from what you do every day. So where you're at right now, like where, where we're at right now is a direct result from the habits. So if you don't have w winning habits, develop winning habits. So it's a quick three tips for you guys. And I uh, hope that helps you out. Um, if this, if this does sort of resonate with you, feel free to uh, comment, whatever, say hello. And I love and appreciate you all. Bye guys. What's important to like for me to comment on here is that I, as so many of us promoted the fuck out of rank makers out of 14 day challenge. You know, it's like everything is hashtag. This is all free advertising for him. So you think you're like, well, I'm like participating in this. It's so helpful. I'm getting out of my comfort zone. I'm doing these live videos every day and, but you're hashtagging it. And I'm like, when I'm going back now through my feed, I fucking pumped so much sunshine up that man's ass it's all free and so a lot of people got into rank makers because of me i got people into the inner circle coaching program too which i'm going to talk about so i'm gonna things are i'm trying to go in chronological order here but it's it, it, this is it's kind of I'm, I'm doing the best i can here so i hope um i hope it's I hope this is making sense so far <laughs> for you there's another part of this story too, which is about Rank Makers Live. So that's an event. It's like a convention that all like, you know, multi-level marketing companies have every year. Well, this one is just for like all multi-level marketing companies if you're a Rank Maker. So I would go to Monate's event and I'd also go to Rank Makers event. And when I first joined, um, it wasn't called that. I think it was called Top Earner Academy Live. And I remember I was so fucking blown away. I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. I have to get to Florida. Like. This is so incredible. And it like looking now, cause rank makers live is going on right now. And it's really heartbreaking to see people, their dreams are so up there and they're just, they're posting what they're learning. And it's just, it's fucking nothing. It's just fluff. It's because they're around in a group in this, like a, a room, like a hotel room, you know, convention kind of thing. And they're with all their friends and people that they've like, you know, connected with in rank makers. And we did the Friday celebration video and we're cheering each other on and like, you signed up a new customer. Yes. Right on. I'm so happy that, you know, your company expanded into Australia. Like we're fucking believing in what we're doing. And you like, you meet these people. So you're there and then you have somebody on stage and they're like, don't become it. Be it. Like people are fucking losing their minds and like, paying all this money and coaching for that. I'm like, I did it too, you know, and it's heartbreaking to see this now where it's still going on. And, and I'm like, this is what it looked like to my friends and family on the outside of this. They were like, what the fuck are you a part of? Like, I think I'm just like, I'm sharing everything I'm learning. And the only people that are interested in this are people in network marketing outside of it. It is culty as fuck and transparent. Okay, so I go to uh, my first fucking Rank Makers Live event. Now, this is important, and this is also um, really embarrassing. You don't need to be a fucking body language expert to see how excited I am to uh, see Ray and, like, just think this is so fucking awesome. So I had, let, like, it was a smaller event, and it this was, I think this was, like, they had these cocktails or something. I don't drink. I gave up drinking in, like, uh, 2000. Um, cause I recognized I had a fucking problem with it. <laughs> and anyway, um, 
I asked if I could like, oh, can I get a picture with you? You know, and he's like, yes. And so at the time, and all while I was in Rank Makers, they had this thing called uh, Celebration Friday. And you like upload a video of yourself dancing to celebrate, like, and you celebrate fucking anything. I'm looking at this little timer on my computer because I can record 30 minutes at a time. It's only two minutes and 52 seconds this segment, but that's what I'm like looking down for for some reason. I love doing these celebration videos. I think they're so much fun. And this was before TikTok, which is so when TikTok hit, I'm like in my fucking element because I love dancing around and I can't dance, but I don't give a fuck, right? Because <laughs> it's just so much, it's just, I just have a lot of fun, right? It's like creating and you're playing with your camera and stuff, your videos, whatever. So every Friday and you'd like cheer people on too. So you could pick a song and I, and I couldn't dance. So I would just do like the typical Gen X dance, the Gen Xers that cannot fucking dance. That's how I dance. And I, and I, you know what? I do dance. I'm not going to like discount my moves right so that's what i would do and so i i picked a song and it was american author's best day of your life and i'd always do that you know that song and then when it like when the beat drop i'd like like oh fuck, i just i thought i was anyway that's just what i fucking did this is it really embarrassing you're gonna see why so then ray said can you how about you teach me how to do your dance i'm like really like what do you mean like oh it's just so funny and goofy and so much fun um, and then, so we did, you'll, so you'll see, like we dance. I like, I like lean in and I'm fucking so excited. Cause I just thought he was the greatest, right? <laughs> I thought he was so fucking smart. And he was like this marketing guru genius. And I'm like, I'm learning all these things. And I'm like actually here and I'm around all these millionaires and six figure income earners. And you got to follow the clues to success. I was just fucking getting deeper and deeper in. Let's watch the fucking video. And then he said afterwards, make sure you post it on social media and tag me, which I did. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. So the thing here was that that gave me a huge amount of fucking like weird kind of status at rank makers live so there was all these people they were like i'm talking all these fucking people like people that are from different companies they're at the top of the pyramid be standing in line for coffee they're like oh you're julie like oh how is it going it's like i was bestowed this special status because like ray fucking like did this video like it was so weird and it was this weird mixture for me. Even at the time, I felt like, um, why the fuck are you all excited? Like, I get it, but I felt like I really respected him. And, um, but also I'm like, you're still a fucking human. Like you're not above me, but yet I really, really respect you. And this is, I, um, I had shared this with Roberta Blevins, um, during life after MLM. Uh, podcast interview that I did with her is that one time I did this race, it was challenge Penticton. So this was after Ironman Canada had been like booted out of Penticton, whatever the hell happened there. I can't remember. And then challenge the company challenge came back. And then I don't know if now it's like back to Ironman Canada, but it was in Penticton and I had done, this would, was going to be my 10th time doing that race. So what they did, it was really cool. They had for the age group athletes, because I was an age group athlete, I wasn't a professional athlete. They gave us the low numbers. So normally on uh, an Ironman race, the person who gets like the number one is like either it was, it's usually, it was the male, whoever was the male from last year, last year's winner. And then they change it. Then it would like alternate. It would be like, then it would the last, like the woman who won last year, but for challenge Penticton, they're like, no, anybody that's done 10 of these fucking races here, you get to have your bikes racked with the pros, which it's like, there's not many people that have done 10 of these races that are also like going to happen to be here during challenge doing this. Right. And you're going to get a lower number and guess who got the fucking number one. <laughs> I was me. And it was so weird because people completely changed how they dealt with me and saw me and i remember i was like like bringing my your transition bags in the days before if you've done one of these races you know it's like this logistic kind of shit show it feels like chaotic you're dropping your bags off right i remember there was this dude that was interviewing some professional athlete and he has his camera and he says are you someone important because i had the number one 
And I'm like thinking now, I wish I had have had my sarcastic like sass on that day. Cause I'm like, yes, I'm fucking important. We're all important. Right. But I'm like, no, like anyway, but even like just people watching me walk around, people were treating me differently because of a fucking number. It was so weird. And I felt that exact same way at rank makers live in 2019 after that dance video. I'm like, what the fuck is going? Like, it's weird. Like, I don't get it. Like what? Like, why? You, you you fuckers were not looking at me yesterday. Now, suddenly, now it's this, it was just fucking weird. But keep in mind, like, that's 2019. It took me till um, December 2021 was when I started speaking out. So I still was, I was still in. You know, even, there's always these contradictions. Anybody that's been in these groups, you know, you know what it's like. You're like, I, I, I felt bad about that. I felt weird about that. It's always these weird little things that come up. But then we just let them fester until they're massive <laughs> fucking things so that was uh okay that was that event and here is let's just show you this these are i guess these are my um are these my fucking receipts that's what this is about this is my receipt <laughs> okay there we, there we go there's that picture there so that was afterwards okay uh let's see next stop this here so, you know, time passes and um, I'm, I don't know if that wasn't 2019 because this is 2019. So my, there's a line in a tragically hip song. He's like, that's locked in a trunk of a car or whatever. He's like, that's when I became chronologically fucked up. And it is part of this. I know people have been a part of these high control groups. Your timelines get fucked up. So that when I did that dance video at that one event that was that must have been like 2018 or must have been 2000 okay because this is 2019 so um this is rank makers live 2019 so here you go now how many people would just be like fucking like oh yeah like i'm on, i'm on law i'm for a moment i'm on the same stage with ray Lota. <laughs> it's probably regretting this fucking moment <laughs> oh shit but um, this was like, there was something they offered, and I think it was called social media relaunch. It was something that was so fucking dumb. <laughs> and all of us rank makers are like, yeah. So if you did this course, and it was like, make sure you change your Facebook photo cover photo update it make sure your bio doesn't have a spelling mistake in it it was shit like that and it was very very easy to pass and then you'd get this certificate and if you completed this then you could get up on stage and get a certificate at this event right and i remember i'm like i don't want any certificate and i don't give a shit about being on stage this is a narrative that is so strong within um rank makers it's said all the time it's like you too can be walking across the stage. And it's said like that in across the multi-level marketing industry as well. You can be walking across the stage. And I'm like, why the, like, for what? Just you, what you're saying is, it's like flashing, that was kind of weird. Um, I just want people to look at me and like clap at, like, like I'll be, me like, be mesmerized by me. It's not this honorable thing to be on a stage and to use that all the time. It's just, it's fucking weird, you know? And so then here I am. Um, I have permission to use this photo. Um, the person that my armpit is on is my very good friend, Michelle Culberson. She was the season one winner of Ray Higdon and Jessica Higdon's reality show that they had called Play to Win, which is a terrific example of abuse and exploitation in my opinion and anybody else that has ever seen it which it's still on youtube and you can google it you can search for it and you can see it um i have no idea uh how michelle has withstood so much um abuse uh mudslinging name calling and has come out the other side of this so strong she's an incredible fucking person um she had won this first uh reality show so he had this reality show him and his wife and what they do to these contestants it was all brought in from the group rank makers 
So all these people from different network marketing companies, they said, we're going to do this reality show. And the goal, the prize is you can get coached by me for a year, coached by Ray for a year, which is like everybody wanted that because we held him in such high esteem that we thought if we get coaching from him for by eight for a year, we're going to be the top income earner of our company. We're going to change the lives of so many people. We're going to be able to open up our charitable foundation. We're going to be able to do all this stuff. Like we, we fucking won at life. If we get coaching by him for a year, oh my God. Right. Or you could get a job with the Higdon group. Um, of course, Michelle took the coaching, you know, when that was her option. Um, so they, but this is what's really fucking weird. They had, it was like, if you look at this video, and a number of YouTubers have been very thoughtful and considerate in covering this because it's extremely sensitive um, what these contestants have been put through. Um, the trigger warnings are needed. They use tactics where you are pressured to reveal your trauma, your childhood trauma, and then it is analyzed, it's mocked, and it's used to manipulate you to try to sell yourself to get a job or coaching with Ray. And you see people take insults over and over and over again. And it's, it's, it's fucking heartbreaking what was done to these people. These people are really good fucking people. And Mich Michelle won. She won this fucking thing. Anyway, so they do these stupid tasks. He'll give them these um, things like, tell me why you should why I should coach you. It's like, fuck, you know what? Fuck you, buddy. You got to tell us why the fuck you should be our coach because we're paying you for all this stuff. Now that it's coming out, I'm like so heated when I see how he's treated people. It's, it's just, oh, I don't have the words. I don't think anybody has the words anyway, but YouTubers, Aaron B's, Julie Joe, um, have done an excellent job being uh, very, very thoughtful and kind and keeping the focus on Ray and Jessica's behavior during this reality show and away from the contestants who are being manipulated. They're given these tasks like sell this um, journal, this gratitude. This is not a radiate positivity <laughs> um, for like ninety nine dollars in downtown Florida. But don't go to this restaurant because we've been kicked out of it multiple times, you know, because it's like fucking network marketers like, hey, would you like to buy this? And so like, it was keeping the comments like, don't be mocking people. They're running down the street saying, would you like to buy this journal? Would you be open to buying this journal? If not, no big deal. Because the, that's what they're taught to do from Ray, from rank makers. And then they're criticized by them and they're mocked. It's this, it's this, it's horrible, you know? So that's this whole other piece that it's not my story to share. That's going to be um, other people's story to share, but it's, there's connections, you know? And that's Michelle. And you can find her on social media. And she creates amazing fucking content. She gets really good TikToks and a lot of good reels as well on uh, Instagram. I guess you know that. And she puts them on Facebook too. It's my fucking generation. I'm Gen X. What can I say? <laughs> so what I think is funny now is that um, what's going on at Rank Makers Live right now is that I think he's promoting a new book called Defiant. I guess this is me being defiant. <laughs> I can't even make this shit up. Okay, anyway, it's also me showing up powerfully. It's also me fucking what would happen if you show up and play the one. You have to have a dark sense of humor about this stuff because it's just, it's so brutal. I, we uh, So many of us are asking ourselves, what were we a part of? What were we part of, you know? Okay, so this was taken at the event. This is Rank Makers Live 2019. And this was, I was so fucking like happy. I'm like, this is, it was amazing. I felt so, um, I felt like I learned so much. Although, what did I learn? You know, if you ask me, I'm like, I don't know. I just, I had a good time connecting with everybody. But I didn't fucking learn anything. You know, but here we go. Here's, here's, I'm going to share with you what I learned. And you're going to see, I didn't fucking learn anything. So this was, I posted this after and I'm like, cause I want to just share This is always, I'm like, I want to share everything I've learned. I want to provide value. I want to give, I want to over deliver. That was another thing that we were coached to do. So for you, how rank makers can help you grow your network marketing business. Here are a list of concepts 
that's why I posted this October 7th, 2019, that I've learned from Ray that have helped me and my team help impact more people. <laughs> Terminology. Give without expecting anything in return. Prospecting is the most important action to take. See if they're open. <laughs> Give them an out. <laughs> oh, God. Check your team group. Is everything in there about the business recruiting selling? This turns off, repels approximately 80% of your people. <laughs> Source, trust me, bro. <laughs> Making them feel bad for not having a desire level, higher desire level. Like all of this, like I wrote this, it's like it means nothing. It means fluff. I knew all of this. Everybody knows this stuff. And this, and some of it is just completely wrong. Every post in a team group should pass this test. Will this make 80% of my team feel inadequate or bad about themselves for not being doing enough? Well, Rank Makers is an excellent example about this, is that will, is, does your content, does your content, Ray, make 80% of your team or your employees or your inner circle coaches feel inadequate or bad about themselves for not recruiting people into your 100k inner circle program, which none of the coaches that I have with my sources, in my opinion, have consistently made 100k. Some of those coaches have never made 100k. And they're 100k inner circle coaches. How the fuck does that work? And then them being made to feel inadequate or bad about themselves. How about all those people on Play to Win, where it was like season two, episode three, where Jessica Higdon says to a woman, you're a liar, you lied, you're a liar, making really sure to bring a lot of shame and draw attention to that when the, all those people are doing exactly what they were coached to do and what you do, which is fucking lie. Exaggerated truth. It wasn't pre-launch, it was pre-launch. What's the, what's the truth? Truth is a flexible concept. When creating content, and by the way, all this is allegedly in my opinion. When creating content, focus on what's in it for them. What problem can you help solve? What solution can you provide? That's a good piece of advice. Didn't need to pay thousands of dollars to learn that. When creating content, talk about what it does as opposed to what it is, i.e. gaining confidence by using a certain product service opportunity instead of talking about each ingredient. That's also a beneficial uh, piece of advice, not, um, uh, he didn't invent this. This is out there for everybody to see. It's free as well. Three content creation methods, entertain, empower, educate. Every Tom, Dick and Harry knows about entertain, empower, educate. This one, oh fuck. Invest, learn, teach. Invest, learn, teach. He calls it ILT. I invented this thing called ILTing. Jesus Christ. You see, so invest, you you buy coaching or you pay for a course or you go to an event like Rank Makers Live and you use and then so you learn. You had to pay, right? You might just invest your time. And then you learn. So you take your notes and then you teach it. So he'd be like, you have like a note book full of millions of dollars. Like all you have to do is share this, do a live video about it and give value and over deliver and then have an effective call to action at the end of your live video and then start conversations. And then over time, you're going to recruit all these people. That's going to be dupli duplicable. And then you're going to be work on your mindset and then you'll be at the top of the pyramid scheme. And that's how easy it is. <laughs> your notes are like uncashed checks helping attract people to you. Help people feel appreciated and loved on. Holy shit. <laughs> I think that one needs to be um, revisited and learned. Don't get triggered by other people's success, i.e. if your first reaction is to find fault with someone who is having more success than you, you will sabotage yourself as you'll never become that which you despise. I have thoughts about this, this thing. It's just this word salad, convoluted nonsense, but there's always these little weird things in here. And I, it, it, this isn't true because the abused becomes the abuser. Not all the time. And you can tell when it happens. Be rooted in gratitude. Instead of complaining about something, 
find something to be grateful for. So this is toxic positivity. And this is also, especially don't complain about my coaching. Don't complain about what I do or what I say or the co contradictions that I'm like doing. You find something to be grateful for. That's, and, and then it goes into your life, right? Like I should be grateful for this. You start turning off your intuition and your instincts. When life throws you a curveball, you can have a low production week, but don't have a no production week. And that's not good advice at all. I used to, I made so many videos on this. I was like, this is the best piece of advice ever. Rest is important. I knew this shit. Like I did 18 fucking Ironman races. You have to have time completely off. Not always no production. What is this fucking production, 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 performance, attention, control, obedience, more attention, um, consistency, the stream wears down the rock. I don't know. I don't know who said that, but I know it wasn't him, but I did hear about it from him. Some leaders seek control versus production. That's absolutely true. <laughs> If someone in your team chooses to get training by someone you don't like, set your ego aside because your teammate is taking action to invest in themselves and grow their business. It's not about you. It's so funny because this is so hypocritical. Anybody that has been within rank makers can attest to this. If you're starting to critically think and um, question things, adding value doesn't mean talking about yourself. If anybody has seen any of those Elamir trainings where Ray has gone on to give advice to people, the story about the ballroom dancing, that was new because I, I left um, the group, which they then had to say that they escorted me out of the group, which I love that language, but it, I left the groups because um, I'm like, I can't even handle it here. It's so, this is so fucking gross. Um, but there's this other story too. And it's like the billionaire spaghetti on the white pants story. Oh my God. I don't know how many times I've heard that story as well. Like there, he's on a boat or a yacht with a billionaire and he, the waiter drops the spaghetti and it gets on this. It's like this fascination with fucking money. It's like people are people. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It's this weird ego, like peacock strutting around. Like I'm so much more important than you. Like you're nothing. You're the same. We're all the fucking same here, you know? I think of like, you go down to the water, everybody takes off all, all their clothes. You're all these fucking naked bodies. And there's nothing, it doesn't matter what's in your bank account. You know, a eagle flying overhead doesn't give a shit. You're, you're just a speck. You're just another blob of human flesh, you know? Um, but this billionaire, so then the billionaire just was like, oh, it's okay. And just started cleaning it up. And like Ray was like, so fucking surprised that this billionaire like didn't get mad at the waiter. I'm like, that is not a story. Like, why are you so surprised? That somebody is treating someone that made an error that is in a, a vastly different like wage, you know, income disparity. Why are you so impressed that he treated them like, like a normal human being? That's more, this, this is where I'm like the, the behavior that you start seeing people do. It's like how they show up, what they say and what they do is two fucking different things. And once your eyes open, once you see this stuff, you can't unsee it. Posture. <laughs> This fucking thing is going to haunt me, I swear. He made up a definition for words. Posture is one of them. The belief in what you have regardless of external acceptance or approval. You know what else likes to do this? Our commercial cults like to redefine words. Um, posture doesn't need another definition. Posture already has a definition. And um, it's not this one. The person who writes the most text in a message is the least postured in the conversation. This has been helpful um, for me dealing with um, the blowback and the harassment from rank makers, especially the fucking men in there and these top of the pyramiders that I had no idea who the fuck they were until I started speaking out. I had to delete and block people every day when I finally started speaking out, especially on Facebook. Holy shit, they came out of nowhere. Um, I would post, this is not for you. I am helping to create safe spaces on social media for people who are leaving the multi-level marketing industry to publicly comment without being fucking harassed and gaslit by you guys, right? They didn't give a fuck. They're just on there. Ooh, going. I'm like, no, I wouldn't even fucking read it. Just delete, delete right away. I was very clear, like setting boundaries. So these guys and like women, it, all kinds of people, but they'd like go into my stories. They would send me private messages. Like 
and it's funny because Ray would always teach about entitlement. You're not entitled to anything, you know, but they were acting very entitled. It's always a contradiction anyway. Um, but I used this strategy and I knew it would fuck with them. <laughs> Because that's what we're taught. So it's kind of like, you know how to fucking needle someone now. So if, if you, and I did this in another video, if you are ever in a conversation with someone that is trying to recruit you or, you know, uh, pitch you on their pyramid scheme, their multi-level marketing, social selling, social sharing, social retail, whoever writes according to them in their mind, it's not. But if you respond with less words, less text, you're going to be in control. With Ray, it's all about control. Everybody needs to be less than him in order for him to be better than you. That's self-esteem. That's it. That's what it's all about. And that's what he teaches. And then that's what we emulate. And then we're all fucking dicks. We're all like fucking assholes all around the internet. And we treat our team like shit under the guise of like radiating positivity, you know, like apologizing to the people I brought into this nightmare and are healing from it now. So somebody had commented on a reel of mine. This was another common thing I've received is like, why the sudden 180? It wasn't sudden at all. Anybody that's left one of these groups, it takes time. It took me a year and a half of questioning before I managed to get out, you know, and, um, but I was like, why the sudden 180? And I said, curious, isn't it? I made sure I responded with less words. And then the next one was like, indeed. So then, you know what I fucking responded? Did I tell this story already? I'm sorry if I did. It's a good story. I, I just responded with the ellipses. <laughs> you can't, fuck, unless they do a fucking period, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> and I want these people to get out. You know, I feel like making content uh, with humor as well as um, facts can be a real bridge to critical thinking. Come from a place of how can I serve instead of how can I get rise and serve. Your why isn't a sob story to get public accolades and pats on the back. Your why is the vision of who you want to become. That's what I learned from Rank Makers Live 2019. So then I get into 100K Inner Circle Coaching. And this is sold to me, as I recall and remember, that if you you know, sign up for this coaching, you are in about six months, you do everything that they tell you to do, you're going to be making the holy grail <laughs> of the six figure income. And, and I may be remembering that incorrectly, maybe it wasn't specifically said that way. But that's how that's how I took it. And um, it's fucking named 100k inner circle, right? I did. And so okay, so I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be serious. I have, I need to do this. I need to make this happen. That's the language we use too. So this is, um, anybody can sign up for this too. At the time, they made it like you had to qualify. That's very exclusive, that they actually turn people away. They wouldn't fucking turn anybody away. They want your money. They will take whatever. <laughs> Hi, Julie. This is so-and-so. I hope you get out as well because I respect you. And I, I know that you're working in, in this and you've been in the industry a long time. And I really hope that you get out. I am with Ray Higdon's Inner Circle. I just tried to reach you. We are currently going through a selection process for our 100K Inner Circle campaign. So it's making you feel like chosen. They use all these cheap psychology tricks. They're, they're powerful, but it's like so cheaply done now. And I see it on this the other side of this. But you're like, wow, like you're going through a selection pro like me. Oh, really? Wow. Like, holy fuck. This is amazing. We are looking for those that may want to be considered, may want to be considered to work one-on-one -on -one with Ray and his expert coaches. We provide a customized blueprint to implement Ray's proven strategies <laughs> before there was Facebook live videos and before there was anything, but from 15 years ago after doing 11 network marketing companies and then getting in at pre-launch, it's proven strategies. Because it's those proven strategies that actually gets you to the top of the pyramid, vibrating at a high frequency and mocking people, treating them with contempt and condescension, um, allegedly, in my opinion, not paying people um, and reimbursing them for travel to different uh, speakers coming there. Never mind the whole shit show of the play to win. Proven strategies and techniques to help our students jump the ranks. We make it totally affordable for those we, we select. Let me know if you'd like to learn more. I remember him like kind of 
this is so weird too, because you'd like coach on like make make people qualify for you, like for your team, make them qualify for a sample. And I can see this is exactly what was done to me. Um, you you feel like you need to qualify, so you're like selling yourself the concept. You're you're selling yourself, and you're selling yourself into the. It's so fucking manipulative, right? So I got into inner circle coaching. Now this is um, where I connect. I had my first coach was, I, I have so much respect for her. She's since left and uh, she's amazing. She's fucking awesome, you know? Um, and then I signed up again to get more coaching. And my second coach is Jennifer Rayla. And um, when I started speaking out, I, that was my fucking goal. I was hoping that she would get out one day. I'm like, oh man, if I make some content, if I plant a seed that one day, if she gets out, I'm good. And she did get out and she is speaking out. And she was one of Ray's top coaches. People um, paying, you know, $30,000, in my opinion, allegedly that I've heard. Um, and they're getting top income earners in millionaire round table. Um, people getting their teammates in and they get a bonus coaching that she was the one. And she was my coach. And we've since become really good friends. So 100K Inner Circle coaching was, um, it's just more bullshit. It's um, uh, everybody in there really believes that we're working hard. A lot of the coaches are working hard. They really have a passion for helping other people. They really believe in what they're doing. There is um, a really a, a heartbreaking thing to see them say, my, none of my clients are working it's just got to be their mindset, but I have this one client who's doing it. And so I know it's not, I know it's the coaching that's working that like that's fucking confirmation bias. Like the statistics don't lie. You know, when 99% of people are losing and have to lose, they have to lose. The business model is set up this way. When the fuck are you going to realize that what we were a part of is a big scam and we're hurting people? How is it possible that in every single MLM, it is 1%, less than 1% that is at the top? Not all these people have a good mindset. You know these people. A lot of these people do shady shit. They're not ethical. They're not operating out of integrity. They're taking these bridge contracts, hopping from one MLM to another, to another, and another. I didn't even know bridge contracts existed. I was so naive. I was so stupid. I thought that you just believed and you worked hard and these, and I couldn't believe that. I'm like, how did this leader, they went from this company and all of a sudden they're starting at fucking mode air and uh, they're at the top of that one already. It's because they were wooed by fucking the company mode air or whatever company. And they get paid these contracts, 200 grand come. And you're not allowed. It's against the law to like recruit your downline from your other company, but everybody does it. That's why you'll see these MLMs are like, I had to pray. It was on my heart. Jesus told me I'm answering a higher calling, the higher calling of the almighty buck. Fuck. So hundred K inner circle coaching. It's just, I paid, um, I was paying $800 us a month for coaching. I'm not making that much at all with money, but I'm like thinking this is what I have to do. I'm, uh, I'm taking my business seriously. I'm going to teach everything I know for my team. I'm going to help people. I'm going to be a better version of myself. <laughs> and um, then the next part of the story is TikTok. So I started to become disillusioned. Cracks were starting to show. I could see more and more contradictions, which is what happens, you know, in a lot of these high control groups. And um, I got on TikTok so I was listening, I could hear Gary Vaynerchuk was talking about it. And I'm like, okay. And I loved it right away. And um, I'm going to show you my first video. <laughs> it's of my, my cat. I rescued him. We rescued him from Mexico, Cozumel. And um, he didn't make it through the pandemic. But uh, anyway, his name is Little Tiger. So if you love cats, I always put cats in my videos. He's like, fucking cats are amazing, right? So this was my first TikTok anyway. I love the creative freedom of it. It started like that. And then I, it just, I started to play around. I love the disco light filter. I started to like uh, lip sync into my hairbrush, 
create Gen X content. And I really like that I could use, I was already being like trying to use all these um, strategies, content creation, doing live videos. I'm still doing live videos every day. Hi, my name's Julie Anderson. Hi, my name's Julie Anderson. Hi, my name's Julie fucking Anderson over and over and over again. I started doing that on Instagram as well. I was doing that also on my business page on Facebook and I had a team group and I had a customer group. And sometimes I was going live in all of those fucking groups all everywhere it, each day, right? I'm thinking the more I production, no production, high production. So I get on TikTok. I'm like, I'm going to fucking create. I'm not going to sell anything. I'm just, I'm doing all this stuff on, on, on Instagram, on Facebook. I'm just going to play. And I had so much fun. And I started to, I would kind of make a little bit of like network marketing kind of content, but mostly not. It was way like, I'm like, I'm free of this. And then I, at the time I'm thinking like, wow, you know what? If people really like my vibe, they're going to like, they're going to want to find me on Facebook and then they're, they're going to want me to sell them shampoo and I can sign them up as a market partner. They can sell shampoo too, right? I'm still like kind of thinking that, but I'm spending more time on TikTok. I'm having a lot of fun and I'm seeing anti MLM content too. I'm like seeing people that are following me and I'm following them back. And I'm like, and it was, I, I blocked some people, which I've since like, like re or I've not blocked, unblocked, whatever. And, um, and some people I remain friends with, I'm like, that's weird. Like, so there's, I was like exposed, I was exposed to different ideas and, but more importantly, I had a creative outlet. I had nobody telling me what I had, what I was doing was wrong, that I should be structured. I should be saying, hi, my name is Julie Anderson. I'm going to give you three tips for how you can grow your network marketing business or in the bullshit. It's like, hi, my name is Julie Anderson. These are three tips for you to grow your network marketing business. I am so happy and grateful. I'm here right now at Rank Makers Live. Just like, bleh, I can fucking activate this shit still, you know, I could just be like, fuck you. <laughs> And it was, I could put a disco light filter to it and I'd like just laugh and hang out in, in the community and you make it just, it's just fun, you know, but I could see the potential why I'm like, you're learning how to tell an effective story in 15 seconds or less at the time in 2019, when I got on TikTok, it was, um, it was, it was very different. It was, um, still quite new and there was trends delivered to you every day. So there'd be like a, a trending hashtag and it would, and a trending effect. So it could be the disco light filter. It could be, it was a trending sound and it was so fresh and exciting and fucking cool. It was so far ahead of like Facebook and Instagram and it was so quirky. And you know, it's like, you'll see people in um, network marketing and I, you know, they're trying to be authentic. They, they're selling courses on how to be authentic. Like you, you just, and then you, it's this forced quirkiness. It's kind of like forced edginess. It fucking, uh, I just can't stand when I see someone trying to, they try to use the word fuck, but they're trying to make it like, can you believe I just said the word fuck? I'm like, it's a fucking word, right? Okay. I don't want to get off on a tangent. Cause I could like, <laughs> on, a, on a soapbox, but I'm on TikTok and I'm like, I'm having a good time. And I'm like, seeing how powerful this is. You could be using this to tell and create more effective content. The whole point is to get your message across, across as quickly as possible, become a really good storyteller. And there's now there's like, you can use music and trends, which is, it's like tapped in current trends, right? This is not happening anywhere else. You could be repurposing this content on Facebook and on Instagram. So I'm telling everybody this in the fucking inner circle group. I'm like, this is amazing, right? I was telling my coach, Jen Rayla and I'm like going on about this in the group and in rank makers, I'm doing this, um, like trying to like tell people about this, giving them tips and advice. And Ray is making passive aggressive content. And it's like, and I'll tell you, I'm really good at making passive aggressive. I'm fucking, I'm Gen X. <laughs> it's one of our fucking superpowers and you can't bullshit a bullshitter. And he keeps like shitting on TikTok. And there's not many people on TikTok at this time. I'm like, and I'm like very vocal about being on TikTok. It's clear. He's trying to like make it like, you're so stupid. It's called ding dong. He would go out of his way to say, you know, you could be on Facebook or Instagram or ding dong. And Roberta Blevins made a really good point. It wasn't like, it was very purposefully done because it's not like it's a mistake. It's not like tick tock, like tick tack or something. It's like, you have to change the language completely. You have to say ding dong, like you're making a point, right? 
but, you know, even when you're in one of these things, I'm still, I still fucking respect him. I still like, like, I fucking respect you. Like you've taught me so much. You've given me this coaching advice. Like you've given me exposure, <laughs> but I'm like, why are you saying ding dong? Like why? I'm like, is this, is he fucking calling me stupid? Like, then you're like, you know, you're questioning things. You're like, what's going on now? Meanwhile, Jen is like starting to like, she, she's listening to me and she's trying to tell the other coaches, like, listen to this. This is like, she's got a point on this, but it's because Ray didn't come up with the idea, which I, I hate now that I even, um, I don't even want to use the word hate because I'm like everybody that is a critic, everybody that is a critic or is like pointing out these contradictions and this horrible fucking behavior is a hater. Right. And I felt it too. I feel people like saying things. I'm like, Oh my God, I can't even handle it. Like they are real haters. Right. So I don't even want to say that word. But I, I couldn't fucking, I couldn't fucking stand. I regret bringing it to the attention of anyone within network marketing, even though they would have found it anyway. Um, but because it's so horrible, like now it's just this shit show over on TikTok. Multi-level marketing content goes against TikTok's community guidelines. There is no way around this. So it's like I saw at Rank Makers Live 2022, people were posting about somebody, a teammate, making a TikTok and Reels challenge for their team. It's like, how is that being congruent? How is that operating out of integrity? You are purposefully ignoring and going against TikTok's community guidelines. It says no multi-level marketing content. It spells it out. That has to fucking create some cognitive dissonance. Like it has to, it has to like get through and it might not, I know for me, you know, you start seeing this stuff and it's just like, it sits there and I'm like, yeah, you're right. You can't not fucking admit it. I mean, you can, but I'm like, you know, thinking you, you got to recognize that you're acting not out of integrity. You're choosing to ignore it and you can, you can rationalize it however you want be coached to rationalize it however you want so you can purchase the next course. So anyway, um, I was just like, it was, it was, it was constantly, I was being shit on and mocked for talking about TikTok until it became apparent that TikTok was a thing. And then, uh, and then fucking Ray sent me a message and asked me to do a TikTok training. Hey, rock star. That's what he'd like to say to everybody when he wants something out of them. So uh, I want to show you this first. Um, this is just to show uh, this was a like with from Ray would send out emails. You get so many emails all the time. Strategies from a content queen. So that's me. So this is a training that um, Jen Rayla, my, was my coach, who is now out and she's amazing. Um, She's definitely somebody to go find, follow on TikTok. She makes incredible um, anti-MLM content. Um, she interviewed me about creating content. And I'm, it's like, I'm so excited to share all these like things I've learned. I want to help people like have fun creating content. Because you know when you, I don't know if you if you know this, but I really like expressing myself and, and it's fun to play, you know. So this was sent out um, to everybody that had filled out this tracker. So Ray would have this thing. It was like, I think it was every Sunday at 11.59 PM, you had to fill out this tracker. And it's all like, you're doing all this work for him. So he can have statistics to then show on his page, be like, I am Ray Higdon and I am a network marketing guru. And, but if you search my name, like all other network marketing coaches, you'll find that I don't want to associate myself with the network marketing industry. I want to bill myself as an author. Okay, anyway, um, which is true. You can see that with all these people, just search for them. <laughs> it's like they're an author. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck were we part of, you know? But anyway, you'd have to fill out how many people you prospected, how many people you um, recruited, how many people you got as a customer. And he would collect that data and he would shame everybody in this group. It's like, again, all of you guys slamming the fist down. You wonder why you're not successful at life. Again, 9% of you in all of this group has filled out the tracker. It's like, fuck, now I'm looking back. It's like, dude, what the fuck? So I was fucking really good though, too. Like even at the time I'd be like 
there's, there's stuff that would piss me off. I'm aware of it, but I would still just comply. I filled out this tracker. So anybody that would fill out this tracker, it was like to encourage other people to like reward people, to entice people to fill out this tracker attacker every Sunday. So then he could have stats, which then he could market rank makers to the world at large, which is really just other network marketers, just pulling from the pool of the already, you know, indoctrinated and brainwashed. Um, that this would be the reward. So one of my trainings was used as this reward. And uh, that was my interview with Jen. Rayla. Okay, so um, anyway, this, then he asks me to do this uh, TikTok training, which I do. And it's right here. So it was 17 minutes and 33 seconds. Um, I'm not going to play the whole thing. But I feel like I should almost kind of post it, you know, what do you think? You think I should post it? I kind of, I could just post it. I don't know. When I see myself um, in the Hunbot stage, it's really, oof. but you know, I didn't get fucking paid for it. Now I know. So when he asked me, I was like, so honored. I was like, wow. Like I had been wanting to help people for so long. And I just like, I respected him so much. I thought he was such a business person. Like I thought, wow, I, I did. It didn't even dawn on me that I should say like, oh, how much am I going to get paid for this? I just fucking trusted him. I just thought, well, I, because there's no fucking way I would ever treat anybody like this. No fucking way. Any, and anybody that has ever like come to me, they're like, I will do this. I always pay them. I would never just like do what was done to me. So a course is created. It's called TikTok and a profit. And this is the email that goes out. This non-influencer got 15 sales on TikTok in month one. So you can see this is December 21st, 2020. It's funny because it's almost a year after this is when I made my first piece of anti-MLM content on TikTok. It was December 13th, 2021. Our friend and network marketer, Leah Davis, went on TikTok and within her first month got 15 sales. Crazy, right? We aren't seeing fast results like this on any other platform. Now is the time to, uh, and tonight on our TikTok and profit training, Leah is going to share exactly how you can get sales this month on TikTok. And then they had four people here that you can see that are going to do this. We've also just added two bonuses. So this is the bonus one. I'm just showing you that it was like, this was in the, the email, right? How to get followers quickly, go viral, and make sales on TikTok, $47 value. And then here's me. Bonus number two, beginner's guide to launching on TikTok, even if you have no following. And in the um, messages that between Ray and I, that he asked me to do this, he had asked, like, what would you title it? And then I was, like, trying to come up with a title, and then he suggested this title. Um, $27 value. If you're brand new to the TikTok world, this second pre-training bonus will help you get started and into momentum quickly. Julie Anderson takes you by the hand and gives you a step-by-step -step deep dive into getting, building your trip. And what you should be posting to keep them engaged. <laughs> it's always like, it's like the your and the apostrophe. It's like, it's like that kind of thing. Get immediate access to the, these free bonuses when you click the button below and secure your seat now. So he was making money off the work that I did and I didn't get paid anything for it. And um, around this time also, um, I created, I got pissed off. I'm still in though. It was, keep in mind, it was 2021 when I finally left, you know. Um, December, I started speaking out, but I left, I left Rank Makers. It was like, um, Shit, I forgot even about this part too. This part as well. But I left that in uh, fucking April. I'm still remembering things. I realize this is haphazard. It's not um, like great editing, but I think it's important to get uh, my story out there and just to let others know that they're not alone. So if you're still with me, thank you so much. I know this is a lot and I'm just I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to get this story out as best I can. So the next part of this is um it's this course is done i feel really good about it but then i'm like i've been shafted this is somebody i have admired and respected so much for so many years and he just fucked me over 
So that from then on, then things started to really fall apart. I started to see more and more um, contradictions and I was more aware of them and I was allowing myself to be aware of them. So, and start further questioning. And, it, and it's weird because when I first got out of network marketing, which was later that year, later in 2021, I remember really being judgmental of people that had left saying, oh, sure, you had to have something personal happen to you for you to take action. It's like, yeah, because that's what life is. When you're in the cult, though, that cult mindset, that cult, cult mindset, <laughs> cult identity, it's very black and white. It's like, well, I'm better than you. I would have behaved completely differently. I would have operated because I was serving my team. Not that I was personally fucked over, right? But it's that's that is it's normal. It's a normal human reaction. It's just these weird things that coming out the other side of this, I'm I'm aware of. So anyway, here this is um this was the final, this was the nail in the coffin for me. So March 14th last year, I decided not to do a live video anymore every day. I thought this is unhealthy. This is really dumb. Like, why am I doing this? This is you know, I finally started to wake up. So this is all I posted on Facebook. And that's a wrap for those who may be interested. I'm not doing daily lives anymore. I don't like how I've allowed social media to take up such a prominent part in my life. It's been an interesting experience for the last three and a half years. And now it's time to move on. Now, when I posted this, I had a couple of people within network marketing that were telling me, nobody gives a shit. Nobody's going to care. You think that all these people are going to care, but nobody cares. But people very much did care. So I had 157 of these fucking comments, as you can see on this. And the next day in Rank Makers, Ray goes live and makes a video about me not doing live videos. And I get reached out to him by a person in his, who works for him, an employee, asking me if I was like quitting doing live videos for the right reasons, which is really fucking suspicious. This is none of your business why I'm doing it and why I'm like, what is going on here? But I'm still like... I like the person, right? And I want to see everybody get out. Um, but at the time, I'm so, I still like them. I'm like, well, no, I don't want to do it anymore. Like, this is why, you know? And But I'm like, why would a group be so threatened to not only have the leader of the group make a video about me not doing a daily live video anymore and then have somebody who works for them reach out to me? What, what, what the fuck is going on here, right? But I... The reason why I know this video was made about me, I don't believe my name was mentioned, but I was tagged in it multiple times. And then I had two people reach out to me. Curiously enough and amazingly enough, one was my coach, Jen. She had been my coach, Jen Rayla. And the other uh, was Michelle Culberson. And Michelle was the only person that had that, like, she was, she said his name. She said Ray's name. And she said, Ray made a video about you in the group. And she's like, I just want you to know, like, uh, you can do whatever you want. And Jen had said, like, there's been a video made about you in the group. And um, I want you to know, I support you. It's your decision. You get to decide whatever you want to do. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? So I went into rank makers, and I could just see my name, you know, tagged. And then I don't know what it was about. I think it was about it's some narrative he's like making up like she's not tough enough or she's not, you know, whatever he wants. He's got to look good. Right. And I, I think it's because his whole thing is that he would show up every day for 10 years because he's a lunatic he's crazy nobody's as amazingly committed as him you know and here's yet another example of someone who just gave up but if you continue go i don't know what the fuck he was talking about and now i don't give a fuck i don't care but the important part is that it was made about me so a member of a group who has some kind of visibility and some kind of status however fucking distorted and weird it is is prominent enough that the leader needs to make content about them stopping doing what they've been told to do and they're the, an, or a, an employee is reaching out to them. That is suspicious. So uh, let's see here. Now I'm going to show you while I'm still, so no, I'm, I know the timeline is, I'm just, I'm trying to do my best here. I got to stop apologizing for this. So I'm going to show you some of the posts that I wrote while I was in rank makers, kind of going back in time, just to show you um, how all in I was to emphasize that this is from December 6th, 2018. This stuff makes my stomach heave now, you know, especially this post. Oh, I did so much shit. I regret it's horrible. You know, it's damaging to a lot of people. So here we go. Extremely powerful training in rank makers, looking at experiencing abuse, poverty, job loss, getting fired, death of a child, all the crap things that happen to us in life. 
instead of using all those reasons as why I can't, look at it instead as why I must. Just observe how seeds of truth are twisted and distorted to keep showing up for your multi-level marketing business, to recruit people into your multi-level marketing business in order for them to recruit others and to continue that going on. That's what this is all about. The death of a child. Poverty. Experiencing abuse. This is why you must continue to show up. I was so in, so fucking deep. We all were. As Ray Higdon said, it's your duty. I capitalized it. To show up for those who are in a similar situation, it's your duty to use those things as your fire instead of rolling over on the couch and watching more Netflix. There's a reason why some people you really connect with and feel energized from, they've been through things you have no idea about and keep showing up, getting stronger, improving, growing, learning. Not using their past as a pity party trip, but as the fire that drives them. We've all been through crap, really bad crap. Choosing how you respond to that crap is completely in our control. It's so fucking wrong and gross. And I'm not going to break this down. It's disturbing enough. It gives you a really clear idea of where I was at and where most of us are at and where your friends and family that are in this are at. We believe this shit. It's, it's, it sinks in so deep and it, it's just like when I was sold, I have to qualify myself to maybe be considered to get into 100 K inner circle coaching where you're like this weird psychological manipulation shit where you're like, I believe this it's all entangled up with you. That's why getting professional help after leaving a high control group is crucial. And I wish I had have done it sooner. I waited four months. I didn't think I was going to need it. I thought, oh, I, I'm not going to need it. But I, it hit me four months after um, I began speaking out. Here's the next post. This was, and this is, I want to draw attention to this too. Because Ray would do this. He would teach us on this. That you go through, you have memories that come up on Facebook. It's always about getting engagement and attention. Always wanting something from people. If people haven't posted on Facebook in three months, then you should unfriend them. Because they're clawed, they're just, they're screwing up the algorithm for you. So on this post, this is March 15th, 2020. This was um, earlier this year, 32 weeks ago. Is that right? Um, you'll see anyway. He commented on this post and he, he knows exactly what he's doing because I was like fucking pumping sunshine up his ass on this post. And he was trying to like get this like, because I would say it's like, I learned everything I know I learned from you. And I it's not true, but I believed it at the time because I respected him so much. I'm like, and you make it, you make it happen. You think that all these things he's invented and come up with, and it's not, it's your own fucking ideas. But he commented on here and you'll see the comment and I, and he, he did it. So it would bring it up in his feed. So then his followers could see it. And his followers could say, oh, wow, like, look at this, this person who is like really ad admiring him and is giving him so much gratitude. And not only that, but she has been speaking out against him. Not like I am now. I've grown in confidence. That's for sure. And also the multi-level marketing industry. But he's being so kind and commenting. So it's very strategic and it's very manipulative. And so I'll show you what I fucking did. <laughs> But first, this is what it is. So massive shout out of gratitude to Ray Higdon. I came across one of his free coaching Fridays live videos here on Facebook a couple of years ago and was blown away by the quality of information he was sharing for free, taking time out of his schedule to answer people's questions about home business and network marketing. Oh, Julie, you were so naive. Oh, God. I was so new to network marketing. It's like I was new to the fucking world. God. How did I live with my head up my ass for so long? <laughs> Had never heard any of the info he was sharing for free. I was just funneled in. And I was like, I need more of this. If he's doing this for free, holy smokes. Can you imagine what you get if you pay for something? 
<laughs> oh man. I joined his group Rank Makers right away and have participated in every one of his 14 day challenge marketing trainings. And I'm also a client in inner circle coaching too. And this is what we were coached to do is to do like this testimonial before and then after. And this is like, this is the best. Like that's what you got to sell. You got to sell your results. People don't care. They just want to know your results. No, he wants your results because he wants to use your story. He wants to use your statistics. So then people will purchase memberships and coaching and courses and on and on it goes. Keep in mind, I'm not, where have I talked about Mon8? You don't talk about Mon8, but you sure as fuck talk about rank makers and inner circle coaching. Before his trainings, I didn't know how to effectively market and attract people to me on Facebook with posts or live videos. I repelled, fuck, I have not read this. <laughs> I took a screenshot, but I never read this. This is the first time reading this again since, since I wrote this. I repelled people from me because of my social media mistakes. That's planted in there by him. That's what he makes. This is now what I see is that we, we owe our success, any kind of success to him and his training alone, that before that, we would actually repel people away because we made so many mistakes. I didn't understand that I was being spammy. <laughs> you don't know what you don't know, right? And this isn't spammy. Oh, man. I also had a super judgmental, negative, and comparing mindset. Where do you think I got that idea from? Why do you think somebody that is in Rank Makers would phrase things in this way? What kind of coaching and training do you think people would receive daily that would think that this is who they were before they entered a high control group. Just some things to think about. Since his trainings, my mindset has made 180 degrees. There's 180 degrees. Oh man. It's taken a lot of work and help from the inner circle coaches. So much gratitude to them, especially my coach, Jennifer Rayla. No way. <laughs> The foreshadowing on this. I can't even believe this. This is 2020. And she just got out earlier this year. This is 2022. Things change when your mindset changes. It's real. It's powerful. My social media marketing has improved significantly. I consistently attract at least one person a day reaching out to me to ask for info. Now you can see how I've been ambiguous there because they weren't asking out for info about Mon8. They'd be asked because I would do videos on anything. I'd be like, why I found this hummingbird candle at a trade show in Okotoks. Well, this is an interesting story and I'll give you the four reasons why you might find one of these at a gas or a fucking trade show in Okotoks. Like it's just, They'd be asking for info. Why did you find this in Okotoks? And so there, that's the, you, you don't have to give the whole truth. You just have to give parts of the truth. That's what we were coached to do. That's what people are continued to be coached to do, in my opinion. <laughs> you can see what's happening, right? Um, I've attracted the exact right clients and team members to me too. It sure felt like that at the time, you know, I had a lot of good people. Some are still in and I really hope they get out. Some, uh, most people that are still in, they think I'm a hater, you know, and I just, I, they're good people. What's so awesome is I've been able to impact and help other people with small businesses, home businesses, just by sharing the info I learned from Ray. You just share it. Doesn't matter if they never do business with me. It's all about bringing value regardless. I was such a good little fucking cult member. I'm so, I'm still great learning and growing and super grateful. I found a home in rank makers. Well, I have since been escorted out of that home. <laughs> oh no. And people have left and they, um, people continue to leave. We have a lot of, uh, Michelle Culberson has left. Jennifer Rayla has left. Um, those are two people that I have their permission to say their names. And uh, they might become my really good friends. We've helped heal each, and we continue to heal through this. And we speak out in our in our unique ways. So this is the next. So this next part is gonna like bring it up, bring things up to speed, like uh, current. What's what's going on now? Like, oh fuck, I totally forgot about this. 
So this is this was uh, Ray's comment. So look at this, 32 weeks ago. And I just snapped, I just took a picture of this today and it's um, October the 28th or the 29th. He's like, and now you are a TikTok rock star. Miss ya. Hope all is well in your universe. And you know, at that, if that had been at any other time, I could have been like sucked back in. I would have been like, oh, he's actually like genuine. He had um, sent me a message when my dad died. You know, I thought it was like a genuine, you know, concern, but it's, I see now it's all fucking manipulation. And so I ignored him and I knew that he would know that I ignored him. And I knew that everybody else would know that I ignored him because, um, because as predicted, it, when you comment, then it gets bumped up in the feed. So then other people that like follow him and are um, really like his content and think he's like the fucking greatest thing, um, which I did for years, they also see it. And so, but one of my other friends says, this isn't MLM, is it? Because this is an old post. I'm speaking out now. Why is this being bumped up in the feed from 2022? So here's my response in my fucking way. Holy fucking shit. Ha ha. This is when my past comes back to haunt me on social media. <laughs> There, there you go. So that's how I chose to deal with it. Um, <laughs> okay, so up to speed now. This is a video that was sent to me um, that was made about me that Ray did. And you'll see him talk about me. And so then, and it's going to be important to just kind of stop and talk about that part where she wasn't successful at all. So I'll just play this right now. Pursuit, but um, it's the watching the impact and seeing you go make a change, seeing you become an impactor, you know, seeing some of our students. For example, we have, we have one student that she, um, I mean, I just, I just, I, I still, I still think the world of her and she's someone that she came into Rank Makers and had never had much success at all, and uh, but she was at our events. She was always, you know, just just a bundle of joy to be around. And she's since become, you know, TikTok famous and bashes network marketing, unfortunately. But there's still a piece of me that's like so happy for her that she's she's changed her life. And I think she's misguided in in where she, you know, bashes uh, for sure, but. It's like, hey, she was able to change her life. She learned some stuff here. She applied that and some other things and went. So, what's interesting? There's a number of things that are interesting about that. Um, the first one is uh, where she wasn't successful at all. So, I thought um, just to show this is me being unsuccessful at a race in Challenge Penticton, Canada. And I did 18 Ironman distance races. And I think it's important, you know, you don't, you know, it's just the pre-cult identity to show that you were successful. You were a person before somebody that wants to take all the credit. And I see now that he wants to take all the credit for me being on TikTok. And it's so weird to say that's that TikTok famous. Nobody knows who the fuck I am. There's like a few people that do. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares. There's like probably like 55 people or 50 people that are like, they're my, they're my kind of friends. Like, it's just, you know, you see people like it's, it's not a big deal, especially TikTok, you know, like it's just, but you can see that it's important to him, you know, and um, to claim that he had this, we, there's, there's this whole focus on transformation as well. She changed her life. No, I didn't. You don't. You don't have to change who you fundamentally are. And that's what he's selling now is transformation. Transfer you need to change. You need to kill the old self. Like it's getting more like violent too. Like you can you just grow. You don't need like a fucking dandelion grows through the concrete just because the pavement splits. It doesn't matter. It doesn't need any courses. It's like people are like that too. Most of this personal development, especially as uh you know, put on by the network marketing industry, it's useless as tits on a bowl. You don't learn anything. Like, what the fuck do you learn? You're like, well, I learned what did what 
did you learn? Not the feeling like you feel so much better. You feel so grateful. What is it exactly that you learned? And you will be pressed to see. It's like, look at what I learned, what I spelled out in that whole thing. I didn't learn anything, but I felt, I felt part of something. I felt like I was going to change the world, you know? I felt like I was learning so much from somebody who knew so much and cared so much and really believed in people, you know? And so I don't think that he probably thinks those things of me anymore. <laughs> uh, it, it is what it is, right? So now this was a piece of content um, where it is now it, he's continued to make uh, pieces of content about me. First it was in uh, Rank Makers. Now it's gone like more public. It's it's uh, pretty brutal. So here is, uh, this was taken from the group Rank Makers and it was um, from one of the videos, the training. And I've done content on this on TikTok. I also posted this on Facebook and I think on Instagram as well. Because my whole point is I want to show what's going on. I'm concerned about these people. I care about these people. You know, a lot of these people were my friends. A lot of these people, you know, some of them I don't know. But I wish somebody had been like, I wish I had had access to information to somebody saying something like this right out there for me to come across. And I probably would have thought they were a hater right away too. But if they had known me, like my coach, Jen, she was like talking, she just did an interview, um, a podcast interview with the soulful. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I forget the name. Uh, if you find Jen on, uh, Jen on Instagram, her it's, it's up there. She just did this podcast interview and, um, she was saying, you know, they're, they're calling me delusional. Um, I think all the same shit that everybody does when they leave a high control group. Right. But she knew me. And she's like, that doesn't jive. Like that doesn't make sense. And uh, she started listening, you know, she started watching my content. She started like and then other content as well, not just mine, all kinds. Right. But she was, as I was telling my story pieces of it, the way I could, I was, wasn't healed first. I was, things are coming out probably like they are now, but enough got through where she was like that, that makes sense. She's not lying. This is, is this happened and this is happening now. And then, you know, she had already had questions and, you know, she was going through her own things too. She was with, she was a coach. She was a hundred K inner circle coach. You can imagine the shit that she has seen and she fucking cared about people. She cared about her clients and to wake up to this, like, you know, devastation of being part of this and seeing people being treated so poorly, seeing fellow coaches being um, treated so poorly manipulated, underpaid, um, exploited, in my opinion. It's, it needs to be, this stuff needs to be brought to light. It needs to be talked about. So this was a video um, I'm starring in here, <laughs> As, but it's like not spoken about like this is, a, this is me. So what is your, somebody had asked, what is your opinion regarding all this negativity that is going on about MLM? So well done, anti-MLM creators, anti-MLM movement. Um, people that are speaking out every single voice matters. It doesn't matter where you are, how you're speaking out. It's landing because people are starting to think and ask questions. They're starting to hear this stuff. Whereas before it was just sealed off. It was a brick wall. It's like, everybody's a hater, but enough people are speaking out now that it's starting to get for them to even have the courage to ask this question in rank makers is a big deal. There's no way when I was in there, no way would you like you, you, you go against Ray, you even question him. It's just like, no, just, it's so stupid to think like this. It's somebody that you really respect and you trust, you admire, you look up to. You can't say, no, you're wrong. They can't say, I was wrong. I'm sorry. They have to make some bullshit excuse and pat it out and do a training and humiliate and shame and mock people. Like what fucking kind of group is that? That's a high control group. Okay, so... Somebody had actually asked this. Apparently, what is your opinion regarding all this negativity that is going on about MLM? So well done, whoever asked that. Good for you. Here we go. Now this is where he's linked in with Joe Dispenza. This is this is where I'm I'm really concerned about people because now it's moved to like um, what I consider, in my opinion, um, very close to Keith Raniere and Nexium. We're at an age of enlightenment, and people are discovering their inner power. People who are operating at lower consciousness level are waking up and there is so much transformation happening that there's one or two scenarios <laughs> because it's a cult. It's black and white. One, you're with us. Two, you're against us. One, there's people who cling on to the negativity, anger, jealousy, bullying, 
And what is true, hang on to your hats with it for this one, is the accuser is always guilty of what they're accusing others of. Welcome to Rank Makers. Holy fucking shit. That's when, when I saw that, I'm like, what in the fuck is that group degenerated to? Like, I know big breath here. If you're watching this, if you're still here, this is a doozy of a video, but I've been through a doozy of an experience and so have many others. And it's important that this information gets out there. I'm sorry if this is, this is heavy and intense. Anti-MLMers love to say that MLMers are bullies when they don't realize what they're doing is bragging. There's some people, I'm some people, who used to be part of this community are actually bragging about turning people to the FTC and taking away the likelihood that they worked hard for it. Yes, I am. I did report people, especially Modair. I fucking can't stand that company, Modair. I want these people to get out. When I see people making false health and income claims, I create content about it. I make stories and I show step-by-step -step how you could report it to the FTC. And now I've started to, like I made a video uh, on YouTube about um, how you could report it to Competition Bureau in Canada. Because I am in Canada. I'm like, why wasn't I doing that before? But, and I show that. And then I would tag companies. I've done it with uh, Modair. I fucking can't stand Modair. I don't, you know, there's always, and I was with Mon8. I don't know why Modair. Um, I think because there's so many people within rank makers that are, Modair, are with Modair and they all recruit each other and they're all like, it's so gross. It's, it's, and it's not supposed to be happening, but it is. And everybody knows it, you know, well, people like dumb, naive people like me, where you're like, what's a bridge contract? And you think, wow, I really like the people here that are doing things. They're all with Modair. Oh, I really like their training. Maybe I'll ask them because I'm not happy with my company and I hear Modair isn't an MLM. I hear they're like something totally different that can cure a condition called MLM PTSD, which has symptoms of being stuck in your network marketing business. Wow, I think I'll just sign up and my symptoms will disappear from this non-existent ailment, which I fucking report and post on stories. So I'm glad to see that um, they're aware that I'm doing this. <laughs> I hope there's some seeds planted. You know, I want all these people to stop doing this. And the, the point of this is I want these people to um, start thinking, realizing that they're not alone and then eventually get out, you know, and uh, because what he's doing is wrong. He's hurting a lot of people. He's hurt a lot of people and he's continuing to hurt a lot of people. Um, if that's not bullying, what is? Well, you know what is bullying? Your behavior is bullying, especially what you have done on multiple live videos, what you have done on your reality show, Play to Win. And I mean, any kind of content you make pretty much, there's so much piece of content out there. It's like the definition of bullying. But here it is. Um, that's a toxic, venomous, old way of thinking bullying. Um, this is my favorite part. <laughs> If you're Gen X, if you have that, gen, if you're, so Gen X, it doesn't matter what generation you are, right? So, um, but it's like, you have that sense of humor. You don't take yourself so seriously. You really like sarcasm. You like to take the piss out of yourself and others. You really, really like it when someone can take the piss out of you, you know, that's it. So I don't, you know, it doesn't matter. Then you're Gen X. So it doesn't matter how old you are, you're Gen X. So if you're Gen X, you're going to know this fucking statement right away. You're going to know the point. Network marketing is such a threat to people at lower vibrations <laughs> because it has possibility for people who have low level of influence to create success all over the world. There's an increase of hatred at lower vibrations. So, um, of course I had to make content about vibrating at a lower frequency. <laughs> I have to, dark humor is, uh, is healing for me. So it's so weird. So you can see this. I'm like, what in the world is this? So that is their opinion regarding all the negativity that is going on all over the world. There is an increase of hatred at lower vibrations. That's the, the last thing. The word hate and hater and hatred. It's that was something else that nobody uses the word hate and hater more than network marketing coaches and the network marketing industry against any criticism. It's always immediately hater and hatred, you know, and I felt that way too. I really, I really felt it. 
So that's where Rank Makers is going now. And nowhere in here does it talk about statistics. What I find interesting about Ray is that he talked about the tracker attacker using numbers and statistics. We were always coached. It was really powerful to use that. 72% of people, like, it's just, it's more credible or something. I don't know. But he never uses statistics. He never has looked at or he is choosing to ignore the statistics and the facts of the multi-level marketing industry. And will always come up with these really weird stories or shit like this. It's always your mindset or it's like um, people, he'll start talking about real estate statistics or start talking about um, owning a pizza plate, never actually addressing the statistics. It's so fucking weird. And that's what really, that's what really scares me is um, because how can you do that to people? It's some dark shit, you know? Um, so I'm going to leave you uh, with two more pieces of evidence of how um, successful I was before um, yeah, I fucked this up, this, this timeline, but that's okay. It's, it's a YouTube video and, um, whatever. Anyway, so here I was at Bermuda with Mon8. Um, the only reason I was there was because of the hard work of my team. And I was proud at the time and I'm not proud of it. I felt really good, but I achieved that before I got into rank makers. My highest rank was achieved before rank makers, which is funny because it's called fucking rank makers. I never made rank, I fucking lost rank. And this is the final successful thing that I did before um, rank makers was in 2016. <laughs> I was responsible for getting the treadmill fixed at the local gym. And this is what I posted on it. Help me. Nobody runs on me. I think it's because my program is in French. No one understands how I work. I also do this strange thing every 30 seconds. A screen pops up, and if the person running on the treadmill doesn't touch the icon in time, I stop. As such, no one uses me. I am a lonely shell of a treadmill. Please aid moi and reprogram me so I can be a part of a healthy lifestyle. Merci, sad and lonely treadmill. So there was my part of my pre-cult identity, and I'm I was happy to... <laughs> I want to end it on a high note. We were always coached. Um, if you're going to do a video, if you're going to have like something bad end on a high note. And that's a, that's a piece of advice I'll use for this one. This was a doozy. This has all been my opinion and experience. I care so much about the people involved in rank makers the people that are questioning, that are getting the courage to look at anti-MLM content, to maybe look at Stephen Hassan's bite model, maybe read his book, Combating Cult, Mind Control or Freedom of Mind, maybe taking in um, Yanya Alich's and Madeline Tobias's book, Take Back Your Life, maybe listening to podcasts uh, like A Little Bit Culty, like Roberta Blevins' Life After MLM and uh, From Huns to Humans with Daniel Bolster. And then going down, uh, going, looking on YouTube, you know, there's all kinds of different voices out there. And this, um, this message, because why I'm speaking out is for the people that are still involved. And I care so much about you. It's so hard to reach over the chasm that divides us because I know you can't hear what I'm saying because it's, you feel that I'm a hater and I have felt that. I know that. I know it's not even, I know that even if you're trying to listen, it's not getting through because I'm very aggressive. I'm swearing a lot. I'm pointing out these things. I'm saying them in a way that I should be saying differently. You could be more polite, Julie. You didn't have to go there. You could have said it in a different way. And I want you to know that all of those feelings are valid and I respect you and that you have worth and value exactly as you are, that there is nothing wrong with your mindset, that personal development doesn't require you to be broken down emotionally in the first two hours of attending Rank Makers Live, virtually or in person. That when 
you feel better because you're not feeling sad anymore, that that's linked to transformation. And that is a cult tactic. That's not transformation. That's not personal development. That is, a, that is control. That's manipulation. This is social psychology. They use this shit. It's a large group awareness training. It's called an LGAT, allegedly in my opinion. When you start to question how you start to heal, the choice is up to you. And I've gone on long enough. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.